Hey all, this is Anjali and in this video we are going to solve question number 6 of your 2017 question paper. As we have already solved question 2, 3, 4 and 5. So this is question number 6 of this paper which basically contains questions about SQL and those SQL questions are related to joins. Like we did this question number 5 which has a single table and questions related to that. But question 6 generally has a part which is to create a table. It's always for all previous years a part of question number 6 is to create a table and then further parts are related to joining two tables. So if I read the first question out here it says that uh, XYZ company conducts workshops for employees of organizations. The company requires data of workshops that are organized. Write SQL query to create a table workshop with the following structure. So we have these four columns. This should be the data type and this is the constraint which you have to apply and it's for two marks. So it's a very simple question which comes every year for two marks as a part of question six. Now how do you have to write it? You can directly start from create table command although if you want to create the database first you can write create database, let's say the company name is XYZ. So I create database XYZ, then I write use XYZ and now comes my create table command. So I have to create table and name of the table is workshop. Then I give round brackets. Over here the first column name should be workshop ID. The data type should be integer. I have given a space between the workshop ID and integer and then give a space and write primary key. That's the constraint. Then give a comma. You can write on the same line or on the next line the next column that is title. Title is varchar. So I write varchar 50. The size is also given in the question. Then comma then we have date workshop. Make sure you don't leave any spaces in the variable names. So I write date workshop and it's date. Then I press enter. Then we have num speakers and the data type is integer. And then finally close the bracket and put a semicolon at the end. So this is a very easy question which you get every year. So it's so easy to get these two marks into your pocket for your board exam. So it's very simple. They have already given you the field names. They have given you the data type. They have given you the constraint. You just need to write them in lines and put commas after that. So what I've done is I've just written create table workshop. The same column name that's workshop ID space the same data type that's integer space primary key comma. On the next line, it's same like title, comma, varchar 50, sorry, title space, varchar 50, comma, date workshop space, date, comma, num speaker space integer, and since it's the last column, close the round bracket and put a semicolon at the end. So make sure you put the semicolons and commas properly because you may lose marks because of that. So it's that simple. So this is A part of question number six. Now in B part, as you could see, there are two tables given over there. So I have two tables. One is event and one is celebrity. So event table has information about the events. Celebrity table has information about the celebrities, which has celebrity ID, name, phone, and fee charge. Now we have a question. The question says, name the primary keys in both the tables and foreign key in event table. Can num performers, that is number of performers, be set as the primary key? Give reason. Okay, so let's start with the thing. First is I have to identify the primary key in both the tables. Now it's very simple rule. If my table is event, so generally if the field is there named event ID, which identifies an event, that should be the primary key. Make sure you should have unique values in this column, like there is no duplicate in event ID and every event has an event ID. So this could be the primary key for event table. Then in celebrity table, celebrity ID can be the primary key. And it is also asked like what will be the foreign key in event table. Whenever we have two tables, there would be one table in which I will be having 
primary key of other table as a column. Like here we have celebrity ID, which is primary key of celebrity table. With the help of this common column, we can establish a link between the two tables. Here, since it's the primary key for celebrity, so it is termed as foreign key in event table. So my answer is primary key in event table is event ID. Then we have primary key in celebrity table is celebrity ID. No space, it's celebrity ID. And then it is asked for the foreign key. So foreign key in event table is celebrity ID because with the help of this we can link the two tables. So these are the keys. Now they have asked can number performance be set as a primary key? Give reason. So no, we cannot set number performers as a primary key. Although in this given data, I don't have repetitive values. Like in birthday, there are 10 performers. In promotion party, there are 20, 12, 15. There are no duplicates and all of them have number of performers. It's unique. But still, we can't have it as a primary key because there might be an event which has the same number of performers as another event. So there could be 15 performers in wedding and there could be 15 in engagement as well. So it is a possibility, but event ID cannot be same for two events ever. So there is a possibility that this value can be same for multiple events. So we cannot use this as a primary key. So the answer is num performers can't be used as primary key since multiple events might have same number for performers. So there can be same number for performers for multiple events. So we cannot take that as a primary key. So that's it. That's your question for the first part. Then the second part asks, how many rows will be present in the Cartesian join of the above mentioned two tables? In the table event, the celebrity ID 102 is present twice in the column celebrity ID. Is there any discrepancy? Give reason. Yeah. First, let's solve the first part that says how many rows will be present in the Cartesian product. So rows in the Cartesian product is number of rows in the first table multiplied by number of rows in the second table. So Cartesian product is when you fetch the data from two tables without giving a condition to join them. So this one has four rows, this one has four rows, so total there will be 16 rows. And then it is asked that in this celebrity ID, 102 is repeated. So does it create any discrepancy? No. Why not? Because the duplicate values are there in the foreign key. And foreign key can have multiple records with the same values. So this means that event birthday is organized by uh, or is uh, the celebrity involved in your event birthday is Sanjay Kumar as well as in engagement it's Sanjay Kumar. So that's perfectly fine. So it can be there. So there is no discrepancy. Dis discrepancy would have occurred like if I have a celebrity ID C107 and here I don't have that celebrity with that ID. So in that case we say there is a discrepancy but over here there is no discrepancy. So this was your option one and if I have to answer for second part of this, how many rows? So there would be 16 rows in the Cartesian product. Okay. And there is no discrepancy since foreign key can have duplicate values. So there is no problem in that. 
So there's no discrepancy in this. So that's B part of question number six. Then comes C part where we have some queries on these tables only, which are each for two marks. Now the first query says, to display event ID, event name, celebrity ID, and names of celebrities for only those events who have more than 10 performers. So this is C and answer number one. So first of all, we have to write what do we, we have to select. So to select event ID, so I can write event ID for that, comma, event name. So make sure you write the proper column name here. So it's select event ID, event name. I'll make sure what's the name of the fields. It's event, event ID, and then you have event, not event name. So I have to write event here. Then I have to fetch celebrity ID. Now celebrity ID is in both the tables. If I will just write celebrity ID, that would give an error because we need to tell from where we want to read the celebrity ID since the column name is repeated. So I have to write like this, event dot celebrity ID. That means I'm reading celebrity ID from the event table. Then I have to fetch the event name from, I have to write both the tables, that's event comma celebrity. And now comes the main thing. I have to join the two tables. The two tables have to be joined on the basis of common column, which is celebrity ID, which is there in even table, which is there in celebrity table. So with where we have to give the major thing, that's the condition to join, which is going to be event dot celebrity ID is equal to celebrity dot celebrity ID. And, and you can join in any condition with that. Like there it's told that number of performers should be greater than 10. So I'll write num performers greater than 10. So my whole query becomes select event ID comma event comma event dot celebrity ID comma name. That is all the columns which I have to see. Then from name of the tables, that's event comma celebrity where the condition to join, which is even dot celebrity ID is equal to celebrity dot celebrity ID. And the second condition, which is number of performers should be greater than 10. So this query gives you two marks and it's very simple to form joins. You just have to remember that there should be a common column in both the tables and we have to make relationship on the basis of that common column. Now the same query, which I've just written, could be written in one more way and that one more way is like I just write here e dot celebrity id same way over here e dot celebrity id and here c dot celebrity id for doing this these are called aliases for the table for writing this way when I write the table name event I have to write e after a space and same way celebrity space c that says that wherever I write E, that actually refers to event table. Wherever I write C, that actually refers to celebrity table. So it makes the code a bit smaller so that you don't have to write the complete table name over here. You can just write the allies of that table here instead of the complete table name. So either of the way you write it, it's correct. So there's no problem. Both ways are going to give you the same marks. So there is no change in the output. There is no change in the marks which you get but you should know both the ways which are possible for writing the answer. Okay, now second part says to display event name, celebrity ID and names of celebrities who have Khan anywhere in their name. So what I have to do is I have to write almost the same query. So I have to write select event. That will be the event name. Then I write E dot celebrity ID comma name from event e comma celebrity c where e dot celebrity id is equal to c dot celebrity id and 
and what and the name contains Khan anywhere. So to write name like percentage Khan percentage and that's it. So Khan should be anywhere in the name. So I have to put percentage at both the sides. That is Khan is anywhere and there can be any number of characters before Khan or there can be any number of characters after Khan. But make sure you write the join condition. So join condition is a must. So we always write the condition to join the two tables like this where e dot celebrity id is equal to c dot celebrity id and you can give whatever condition is asked in the question. But join has to be mentioned even if it is specifically told in the question or not. Whenever you have two tables involved, you must mention the condition to join the two tables. Okay, next is to display event name, name of celebrities and fee charge for those celebrities who charge more than this. Okay, so it's almost the same thing. So just writing it here. Okay, so we have to write uh, display event name. That is select event. That's fine. The name of the celebrity. We don't have to show the celebrity ID. So we're just going to show the name and we have to show the fee charged. So the column for fee charged is fee charged. So it is we have to fetch event comma name comma fee charged from event E comma celebrity C where this condition is true and over here instead of this condition I'm going to change the condition that will be fee charged is greater than it's greater than 2 lakh. So it's two zero 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 zero. So this is your answer for query three. So two marks each, you get six marks for answering these queries, which are almost same. The only thing is that the condition with the join condition changes, but join you have to put in each of them. Sometimes the question is even easier because they give you the SQL query where you have to tell the output, like this query is already given, and it is said that you have to tell what will be the output of this. In that case, it becomes easier for you because you get the answer of the join in the question itself. Because for the above two queries, how you should put join, you can see from the third query. But the better thing is that practice well so that you don't need that hint. You should be able to write the queries to join of your own without any help. So this is how we make joins. The key thing is the common column in both the tables. So make sure you give a condition to join the tables on the basis of common column that is this condition and whatever other condition is there that comes along with that with and but you must specify the condition to join the tables whenever two tables are involved so that's it that's equation number six which gives you 10 marks so these are the queries so we have joins and how to write the queries for joins that is all you have in question number six. So prepare your DBMS properly because it's for 30 marks. As we've discussed that question number three, question number five, question number six contains SQL questions. I hope you understood how to write these queries. In case there is a doubt, do write in the comment section. I'll get back to you. And keep watching, keep learning.